Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's July 3rd, 2018. I hope everybody's going to have a wonderful Independence Day tomorrow. Um, boy, we got a crazy one today. Um, I tried real desperately to find out who sent this article to me, and apparently Facebook Messenger ate it. Um, but regardless, thanks. You know who you are. Um, but SpaceX blows hole in the ionosphere. Um, this is not a new topic for me or any of my viewers. Um, many of you have already, you know, heard about uh, the you know work I've been doing on sounding rockets and people, you know, blowing holes in the ionosphere. So. And, and most of what I'm talking about is with sounding rockets. Um, we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, but I'd like to mention that, you know, everything you're about to see is open source, free of charge. And if you would kindly support me monthly on Patreon, I'd appreciate that. Or give a one-time donation on PayPal. Um, always appreciated. I did quit drinking coffee. Uh, <laughs> so I probably need to change that to green tea or something. But regardless, i um, feeling much better. Uh, many of you uh, know about my battle with Graves' disease. Um, but regardless, working out, man. It's really helping out. Um, so to the story at hand, I've already pu published it on climateviewer.com. Links in the details over there. Um, for all of you watching this live on Facebook, um, I appreciate you. Thank you guys for hanging out. Say hello, everybody. I see that a lot of people have already jumped in. Please share this video around. It's going to be pretty epic. Um, so this, this whole blowing a hole in the ionosphere, it, you know, I've been saying for a long time that ionospheric heating, using things like HARP, um, rockets go hand in hand with that and they always have I'm gonna break down the story for you give you a lot of details uh, pay attention I'm gonna go very quickly on this one so um, like I said all the details are already on here we're gonna go through them very quickly um, and as I previously mentioned uh, there's me and Dominic we just did a video on artificial gravity waves barium clouds and chemtrails from space and just before that, I did aluminum, barium, and chemtrails from space. So I hope you guys will check those out um, along with the Trump video on the Space Force. Pretty funny stuff. But here's the story um, in a nutshell. Elon Musk's Falcon 9 rocket tore a hole in the atmosphere. Now, the article is dated March 26, 2018, and the launch actually occurred back in 2017. Um... But the interesting part about it is that it blew a temporary hole in the layer of the Earth's atmosphere nearly 560 miles wide. Just one rocket launch. Now, um, this is bad for a whole lot of reasons. Um, namely, that you know it affects the ozone layer, it affects weather underneath. But the reason they're complaining, of course, is because it affects GPS and satellites. So apparently this 560 mile hole lasted for a total of, uh, I believe it was 13 minutes. Um, you know, it, it caused a one meter GPS error worldwide. Um, you know, so your GPS, if you were playing Pokemon Go or something, would have been off by a meter. Doesn't sound like a big deal. To the average person for but for the scientists for um airlines and boats that are navigating you know this could get weird real quick um a guy named charles ch lin from the national cheng kung university in taiwan said without considering uh without considering rocket launch effects these errors from the ionosphere troposphere and other factors will produce up to a 20 meter errors or more so this could get really weird really quick. And that's why they're now starting to get concerned about that. Now, um, you know, this may like not sound like a whole lot of, you know, much to anybody. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, screwing with the atmosphere with these rocket launches, there are multiple launches per day. I get all the launch not a, um, notifications. 
And, you know, ripping holes in the ionosphere, bad idea, monumentally bad idea for a whole lot of reasons. I'm going to go right into those. But a scientific paper was published as a result of this, um, you know, <laughs> of uh, them ripping, you know, tearing the ionosphere a new one. <laughs> um, and the paper was gigantic circular shock acoustic waves in the ionosphere triggered by launch of the Formosat 5 satellite. Um, links are in the video or in the article already if you guys want to read this. Um, it was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base um, and you can see that 24 August 2017 and of course it made a huge hole in the ionosphere and they talk about the total electron content and a whole bunch of stuff like that. Um, but a shock acoustic waves is what they're blaming it on. Interesting. Um, but let's jump back a little bit and do a little bit of history. So James Roger Fleming, one of my personal heroes, best historian on the planet on geoengineering, wrote a paper called On the Possibilities of Climate Control in 1962, Harry Wexler on Geoengineering and Ozone Destruction. And in that paper, Harry Wexler, before his sudden heart attack, before he could give this um, speech, warned that shooting rockets into the sky and tearing holes in the ionosphere could disrupt weather worldwide um, and, you know, obviously tear a hole, you know, destroy the ozone layer. Of course, we've all, we all have heard the story about how CFCs are to blame for destroying the ozone layer. No real mention of, um, you know, tearing holes in the ionosphere. But this is a great paper. Um, I also have a PowerPoint right here that you can click on and go through that and read, you know, Harry Wexler's warning as it w was. But of course, the Rand Corporation, two years later, said, you know, um, this would actually be a good idea. You know, pollution of the upper atmosphere by rockets. And they go on to say, you know, we probably should do more of these. You know, these would be great for tracer experiments in the future, which is the focus of my sounding rockets and chemtrails from space stuff. You know, all the aluminum, barium, um, and other chemicals that they're dumping up in space. It's, you know, affecting weather, it's affecting climate, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I've wanted to point this out it's over on weathermodificationhistory.com sounding rockets explosive shells pound ionosphere 1970 to 1975 and if you scroll down just a little bit you'll notice this one nasa skylab launch knocks out radio communication over atlantic ocean 1973 so this isn't the first time by any stretch that something like this has happened you can scroll down here and actually see a photo of that so this was the Skyland, um, Skylab launch. And when it was going up through the atmosphere, anybody that's seen an Atlas V rocket, it is monumentally huge. I mean, it makes other rockets look like pencils. Um, but this actually knocked out radio communication over the entire Pacific. Pretty freaking amazing. So Skylab, history on that right there, if you guys have never heard of Skylab, paper on that. A sudden vanishing of the ionosphere F region due to the launch of Skylab. Mandelo et al. 1975. Links are in the article already if you guys want to read it. Um, seems like less and less people read nowadays. That's why I have to do these videos. Um, but, you know, links in the details. Also, shortly thereafter, artificially created holes in the ionosphere ionosphere again by Mandelo in 1978 um, so creating holes in the ionosphere big problem Harry Wexler warned about it um, and nobody's really talking about it well now that SpaceX tore the ionosphere a new one apparently people are talking about it again go figure um, but here's where the story gets even weirder NOAA just prevented SpaceX from showing its rocket in orbit. What? So, apparently, the, the NOAA gag order wasn't enough for everybody to have fun with. 
Now Noah's censoring video from space. I'm sure the flat earthers are just having a field day with this right now. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, there, there's a big to do about, you know, video from space. And I just learned this tonight. So what was uh, Noah's excuse for this? Well, Noah said, we're looking into questions why the broadcast interruption of this morning space, SpaceX launch of the Iridium 5 will be in touch uh, when we know more. Um, <laughs> which prompted some pretty funny um, responses. This guy right here, um, can I blow that up? Ham radio organization AMSAT had to get a NOAA license to take a 320 by 240 pics of the AO92 CubeSat like these, including an inspection of my ham radio ham station in my den. It's overkill. Are you kidding me? Um, you know, and people are like, well, you know, Noah, we're waiting. I mean, can you give us an answer? Cause this going to be good. Um, and apparently I found that answer why Noah killed the satellite feed. You know, obviously this was just some BS, you know, them saying, you know, we don't even know why it was interrupted. Well, an obsolete law prohibits SpaceX from broadcasting videos from space. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? So I had to look into this law and it's several decades old. It was passed in 1992 and um, it's called, let me see the exact name that they gave you here, the National and Commercial Space Program Act. And apparently this act prevents people from um, broadcasting video from space without a license. Uh, what, I mean, are they, so this kind of goes back to my old Google earth days and, um, you know, a, a, a military paper that I read one time that said, you know, one day there will be video from space widely available, and this is going to make it very hard for us to keep our secrets secret. And, you know, we're approaching a time now where, you know, there are many companies out there that are selling video from space. Obviously they've got a lot of license. I hope to show some of that live video footage from space um, in the near future, you know, on um, climateviewer.org, on climateviewer 3D. So I'm in, you know, talks with some people about being able to do that. But apparently if I do, I'll have to get a license. So that law is over here, U.S. Code Title 51, National and Commercial Space Programs. And um, links in the details, you know, obviously it's already on the article and this is straight from NASA, their version of it. But apparently NASA wouldn't even allow them to show their SpaceX launch without a license. Um, so that's, that's the big story. Um, you know, SpaceX tears hole in the ionosphere, um, you know, messes with the GPS. Uh, Harry Wexler warned about this in 1962. Sounding rockets, chemical releases, just the exhaust from this um, probably had a lot to do with that. Um, it causes air glow. Um, they've done many experiments on this. You can read all the details in the article. It's on climateviewer.com. SpaceX blows hole in ionosphere, NOAA sensors video. Um, and like I said, you know, all of the, the links that I just showed you are already on the article. This video will be on there as well. In addition to Trump's Space Force owning the weather in 2025, the other two chemtrails from space articles, my harp um, and the sky heaters explained, um, and my chemtrails from space playlist where you can learn all about how rockets are screwing with the sky and they're heating them with ionospheric heaters. Um, one last note before we go, um, I'm, I've been busy working the last couple, you know, at least week or two on a new version of Climate Viewer for all you guys who haven't been able to use Climate Viewer 3D. Um, it's called going to be called Climate Viewer Mobile. I'm bringing it back, give you a little sneak preview of what that's looking like right now. So I've got up on the screen here, this is active volcanoes and eruptions worldwide. Um, you can click on the little details. It'll show you all about that in a nice, beautiful pop-up. The new map list, which is sexy. What, what the hell is that? What just happened there? Something just happened. Let's, let's redo that. 
So this is the new map layer chooser. Um, it's got preview images of every map. This is a massive undertaking. I have 700 maps on here that I have to make a picture for each one of them. Oh my God. So please support me on Patreon and PayPal. I'm working my butt off over here. But as you can see, it's already looking dead sexy. Um, I love having the image previews of each of the maps. It makes it so that people can, you know, see what they're about to click on. Um, red ones are the really big maps, so you'll know, you'll be warned. You can click on this. It's, you know, goes from load map to, re to remove map, puts it up on the map here. This is a flat map, so it's, you know completely uh, mobile friendly, doesn't require a th 3D processor. Um, if you click the little information icon on any one of these layers, it'll take you to the page. Every single map has its own page with descriptions, um, where it came from and all of that. I'm still working on all this, but it's working beautifully so far. You got categories up here, so you can go through and see all of the maps that way by category. Um, you know, of course, Climate Viewer 3D is also available in the new version. It also has the beautiful map list, which for some reason is screwing up because I'm making a video. I mean, what the hell? Anyway, it's new. I'm working on it. There's a, if you want to test it out, it's at mobile.rednet.solutions currently. If you want to beta test it. Um, and the whole thing has a beautiful site map to go along with it, which will have text links to every single map. You can see that I've gotten this far so far. 700 maps to go. Uh, 700 maps total. I've got about 630 to go. Oh my gosh. So I would encourage you to please continue to support me on climateviewer.com. Give monthly with Patreon. One time donation with PayPal. I do all of this for free otherwise. And of course, if you'd like to donate to fixing my um, health, you know, I have a GoFundMe currently going, gofundme.com slash fix my thyroid. I am feeling much better. I've changed my diet. I'm working out. Um, thank you to everybody for the, your prayers, your well wishes, your information. Um, I've tried so many new things that are really helping out and I greatly appreciate your support. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope this has been an informative video and, uh, Watch out for those rockets because apparently they're tearing the ionosphere a new one. <laughs> so uh, once again, thank you to all the guys hanging out and chat with me late tonight. I appreciate you guys all showing up and um, please share this video around and uh, remember that uh, this information is powerful and you know, with information and uh, with power comes great responsibility. So with that information, please remember to attack ideas not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.